Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. I want the scripture he wants. 10, it's 21 and 10. All right, 21 and 10. Let's read that. Exodus chapter 21 and verse 10. Read it up. If he take him another wife. All right, so if this man take him another wife, and what's your question? Come over here, bro, so you ain't up under the trees, man. You, my man, step over here. What's your question concerning this? My, my question concerning this is, is this not a commitment? Let's deal with the first part, and if he. What is it talking about? If he. Yeah, and if he. If he like that. Hmm. Is that it? Because a lot of, this is why YouTube is not good for everybody. Because you... Our brothers are able to quote a specific scripture and don't know the context in which this scripture is talking about. Bring it up. When you read Exodus chapter 21, I'm about to read it for you. Let's start up. Re start at verse 7. And I'm going to tell you, if this man that is speaking about in verse 10 is righteous or if he wicked. Right. And then, where's Hosea? Come here, Joe. Read verse 7. Exodus 21 and verse 7. Read out. If a man sell his daughter to be a maid servant. You ever read this part before? All right. So why you couldn't answer my question when I just asked it? Well, I do You're ask not very fa familiar with it? I do ask the question. But you were going to another body. No, what, I, what I'm talking about is because when, once you get to verse 10 and it says, if he... You get what I'm saying? You got to read up to see the context on the, who he is. Right. And if he, I can't start a book off in the first words in a book is, and if he, you're going to open a book and be like, wait a minute, I feel like I'm missing something. Right. right. Is this talking to the Israelites? Uh, nope, I'm about to read it. Okay. You're about to see. Yes, yes, the, this is in the laws of Moses right now. And right? He's not talking to the Israelites. No, he's talking about a specific example of something that was going to happen. Okay, let's, let's read it. Let's read it. And if a man sell his daughter to be a maid servant, she shall not go out as men servants do. Uh -huh. If she please not her master who had betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed. So here's what's happening. A man sells his, his daughter into, into um, servitude. The person that he sells her to marries her. Now after a while, he don't want her no more. Mm, it's righteous so far. No, <laughs> it's already starting off unrighteous, right? right? To sell her unto a strange nation, he shall have no power. And if he don't like her after a while, he cannot sell her to a different nation. Right. Meaning go and sell her to the Ishmaelites. Again, this brother is wicked. Right. Read. Seeing he had dealt deceitfully with her. He dealt how with the first wife? Deceitfully with her. So in the context of what Exodus 21 and 10 is talking about is a brother that's dealing deceitfully with his first wife. That's right. Not righteously and going to get another wife. This Negro wicked. Right. And trying to get another wife. Right. Let's keep reading. Verse 9. And if he had betrothed her unto his son, uh -huh. he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. So it says, and if he gave that servant to his son, he got to treat that servant as his daughter. Right. Read. If he take unto him another wife. Now, this same wicked man, if he go and get him another wife, read. Her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. Moses is saying when he get another wife, that first one, that food, raiment, and duty of marriage he cannot take away. Now, why would Moses put this in the Bible? Bring it out. You got what I want? Give me Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4. Nope. 
Give me Matthew 19 and 4. Listen, because it's all going with the same thing. Read this. Matthew 19 and 4. And when he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Uh -huh. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Who are we talking about? We, this is Jesus the Christ speaking, the black Messiah. Yes, He's given a clarification on marriage in the New Testament. Right. Why? Because his very own disciples had questions about the same stuff you asking about. Right. How to deal righteously with a woman. Read. They twain shall be made one flesh. Uh -huh. That's originally marriage. Is they twain, not they three, not they four, not they five. Adam and Eve. That's right. That's all it was from the beginning of the Bible. Right. Through man's own hearts and inventions, they did stuff outside of God's original order. That's right. I must prove it. Read. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. Uh -huh. Now, two people become in one flesh. You can never see a scripture in the Bible that say three become one flesh, that say four become one flesh, that, be, that say five become one flesh. Because if a man has multiple wives, that's three people now. Then when I get a third wife, that's four people now. Hmm. Keep reading. What therefore God had joined together, let not man put asunder. That was what Moses was expounding on in Exodus, the 21st chapter. Read. They say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? So he said, okay, but Moses told her we can get a writing of divorcement and put him away. Woo, read. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart. Listen to what he's saying. He said, Moses, because y'all want to act like niggas. Gave y'all an opportunity. Read it. Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning. But from the beginning. It was not so. It was not so. Now do you understand the difference? I already understood. There's, there's several things that you read about during the time of Moses that went on that Moses put laws into the Bible what today, with the understanding of Christ, is no so is no longer so. Give me the book of Matthew, chapter five. Give me the book of Matthew, chapter five. I want twenty-seven. Eighteen. Think not. Seventeen. Matthew five and seventeen. Bring it on. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That's right. For verily I say unto you, till heaven. And earth pass, one jot, one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, uh -huh. till all be fulfilled. Uh -huh. Wherefore, therefore, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments. Believe it or not, multiple wives is a least commandment. Teach. It's something very simple. You know who, who struggle with multiple wives? So-called black man in America. Right. Because in America, when they want to sell a cheeseburger, what they do? Put a half-naked woman on the screen right. biting a cheeseburger. Right. Teach. You have access to all type of filth for free on the Internet all day long. Bring it out. We don't know loyalty to no woman in this place. Why you think our community is full with single-family households? Teach, huh? Because our natural self want to hit it and go. The Bible reigns us in and says, no, you got to be a husband. You got to be a father to your children. That's right. That's the, the natural man does, uh, your natural self reject the way God set everything up. Bring it out. So let me, if I'm a lustful man and I love women, wouldn't it be easier for my natural self to have one wife right. or multiple wives? It's very easy for me to have multiple wives. Because now I can play this game or she ain't listening, I'm going to go to the other one. There's never any harmony in these men's marriage. They sensationalize it over YouTube. Teach. But I guarantee you, you get around their families and see. Verse 27. He have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. What am I showing? The magnification of what adultery is under Christ now. That's right. So Christ said, of course, under Moses, you heard what they said, thou shalt not commit adultery, right? Hmm, read. But 
I say it to you. Now he's going to magnify what thou shall not commit adultery means today. And you tell me if a brother with multiple wives is not doing this. Because I, I'm a man just like you a man. And I know before you talk to a woman, you lust after her. Bring it out. You looking at her in a different way. Right. You want to holler at her. You want to get the number. Right. You want to get your swag right. So when you talk to her, you don't look corny. Right. Teach, huh? He said, we know during Moses, he said, thou shall not commit adultery. Read. But I say it to you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her. But whosoever look on her to start lusting after her. Read. Had committed adultery with her already in his heart. How can you get multiple wives without doing that? Bring it out. How can you get multiple wives without looking? You're a married man already. That's the only way it's multiple. How can that happen if you don't look on a woman to lust after her? Bring it out. It can't happen, brothers. That's right. It can't That's right. happen. Because the first thing that you got to do is you got to look at her. You got to say, damn, she look good. Right. She <laughs> find it. You know what? I'm going to make her wife number two. Bring it out. And you break this commandment in the Bible. Read it again. But I say it to you that whosoever looking on a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Get me the book of First Timothy's. Chapter, no, 1 Corinthians 7 and 2. And then I want Deuteronomy 17, 17. That was the other brother's question about right here about the most wise, but I'm just... I ain't you was trying to get clarity on Exodus chapter 21 and verse 10. 21, verse 10. Right. But you got to understand the context of Exodus 21 and 10. Moses is trying to rein in a people that are wicked. He's trying to convince people that's wicked and trying to teach them, look, if this happened, then do this. If this happened, then do that. You get what I'm saying? So that dude, when you read Exodus chapter 21 and verse 10, that is a wicked man. But what about Jacob? I'm, I'm going to read it right now. I'm going to read it. First Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Uh -huh. And let every woman have her own husband. If you got your own something, are you sharing it? If you got your if you got your own car, can I come over there and say, "Hey, man, this is my car too. Let me. I'm, I'm gonna take it for a couple days." So you get what I'm saying? The Bible is plain and easy to be understood. Right. What ends up happening is the lust of the flesh have men seeking with itchy ears. Bring it out. They seeking something to appease the lust and still look holy. Right. Right. You gotta fully well look yourself in the mirror and be like, you know what? I'm wicked. That's right. My thoughts are wicked. Right. The way I walk is wicked. The reason I want to talk to this sister is wicked. And Gee. then from there you can start to change. Even when people get set up in these communities today and they do AA meetings and, and, and all type of substance abuse meetings. The first thing that they got to admit within themselves is that they got a problem. Right. right. If you're addicted to drugs and you, ain't, you don't see a problem being addicted to drugs, can't nobody help you. Right. right. So if you're addicted to lust and you want to treat our sisters like they hoes in the street, and you don't see nothing wrong with that, it's very easy for you to walk up and say, hey, bro, I can have multiple wives. Bring it out. Bring it out. Meanwhile, you ain't seen your kids in a third household in two months. Right. right. Think about what we asking for. How can the Israelites provide a solution to single family households, but then turn around and create single family households within our organizations? Right, right. That would make us a hypocrite. Right. right. We are hypocrites if we turn around and do that. Read what you got right there. Titus 1 and 6. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife. The what? Husband of one wife. Paul understood something. He said, look, when you set up leaders in these churches, set up the ones that got one wife. Right. That's dealing with one woman. Don't set up these men that's got three, four, five uh, women out here in the street. Three kids over here on the south side of Chicago, right. another two kids on the west side, right. two kids on the north side, and here you are playing hopscotch and daddy in house from house. Right. You're worse than the men in the streets. Right. How can it separate the holy from the, from the unholy if we doing those same things? Right. And disguising it and masking it behind the Bible. Where's Job at? Woe to them that call good evil and evil. Deuteronomy 
chapter 17 and verse 17. Bring it out. Neither shall he multiply wives unto himself. Wait a minute. Go up, go up, go up, go up. When thou gettest a king. 15. Verse 15, Deuteronomy 17 and 15. Uh -huh. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. So he says, set a king over you who God shall choose. Right. Read. One from among thy brethren uh -huh. shalt thou set a king over thee. Uh -huh. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. So he said, don't set a stranger over thee. Jump to verse 17. Listen to what it say specifically about the kings of Israel. Now, this the top man, head honcho. Read. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself. What? Wait a minute. So since the Old Testament, the book of Moses, we were never allowed to multiply wives to ourselves. Yes, yes. Never allowed. Now, there were provisions met because Negroes are wicked. They're going to do what they want to do anyway. So Moses put things in the law to better help them. Right. Right? Read. That his heart turn not away. Neither shall be greatly neither shall he greatly multiply himself silver and gold. So there were certain things that a king just couldn't roll like that. Right? Same thing that Paul is reiterating when you read the New Testament. He's saying, look, if you're gonna set up a leader, make sure he only got one wife. Right. Why would Paul say these things? Remember Paul said, I've seen things that it's a sin for me to even say. He said it's a sin for him to utter the things that he's seen. Mm. And after he saw him, he came down and said, hey, if a man want to be a bishop, make sure he got one wife. Mm. These things are not coincidences. When you look at these men, look at their careers. You know how hard, I got seven children, bro. I'm telling you straight, I got seven kids and a wife, right? You know how hard it is as an electrician? I, I make decent money. You know how hard it is to take care of a wife and seven children yeah. under one roof? Teach. Being a man with a good trade? I make good money. You get what I'm saying? Now, imagine me having five houses with kids scattered Bring all over. Bring it when out. When you look at these brothers that be talking as multiple wives, most of them ain't even got a job. Bring, Bring it, it out. out. Nobody want to deal with that part of it. We just want to deal with who we can lay with, and there's more women and men, so it got to be of the Lord. Nobody want to deal with what did your kids eat in your third household two weeks ago? Bring it out. Did you know your kids went to sleep hungry tonight? They ain't got no food in the house? Yeah, right. You don't know because you laying with the mama from the fourth wife. Teach. Meanwhile, the other three houses is lacking because they don't have that daily guidance from a man in the household. Right. Teach. What did I have you get? Isaiah 5 and 20. Yeah. Read Isaiah chapter 5 and 20. We got to stop sensationalizing sin. We got to stop sensationalizing sin in 2020. We in the last days, brothers. Right. This thing almost over. That's right. We on the corner te teaching about multiple wives. And I understand you just had a, a, a quick question on top of his. Nevertheless, we on the corner teaching about multiple wives. And our people celebrating the 4th of July. Bring it up. They don't even understand that in 1776, y'all was y'all was watching the fireworks in chains. Bring it out. Y'all had shackles on your ankles watching fireworks. Bring it out. 4th of July, 1776, ain't got a damn thing to do with you so-called black people, yes, man. Yes, yes. Hey, what happened to the revolution? What happened to George Floyd? Right. The revolution on vacation today. Our oppression is on vacation today. Right. Now we can be good old American citizens and, and equal with them today. They'll start back oppressing us again tomorrow. They gonna give us the day off from oppression today since it's the 4th of July. Bring it out. Today all men are created equal. This is hypocrisy and you falling for it, so-called black man. That's right. How dare you not teach your children that their ancestors was in slavery in 1776? Right. Why would you let them grow up and celebrate this madness? Right. Why would you celebrate this madness? Barbecuing and popping fireworks for another man's freedom and he ain't gave you your freedom yet. Bring it out. Right. You still scared when the police get behind you when you driving down the street. Teach. Police pull up right now, whole corner gonna scatter. But you telling me the day is the day we celebrate our freedom? We ain't free yet. Bring it out. We ain't free yet, black man. What you celebrating? Your people was in slavery for almost another hundred 
years. And I ain't talking about goods. I'm talking about chattel. Picking 300 pounds of cotton a day slavery. For another 100 years. That don't include Jim Crow. That don't include the black codes. But we celebrate. Let's put on our red, white, and blue as if just two days ago we weren't marching saying black lives matter. Now today I celebrate the oppression of my people. Right. Y'all some fake revolutionaries around here. Bring it out. Bring it out. Only people stand solid for our people 24-7 is the Israelites. That's right. They used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.